JBR podcast. Wake up and check it out. Where the music and life connect. Let's go. Well, here we are with Bill Raylan on our episode one. Uh, we're working out some kinks. I released the PSA this morning and we figured why not go ahead and do our first talk. And while we do that, it's a Saturday afternoon and we're going to have a beer while we have a chat, but I can't have the normal cigar, Bill. So I'll give people a little rundown. Bill is a good friend of mine and we go back quite a few years and I met him through Jack Lavin. Correct. Who was a uh, notable fame for one of the bands he's been in. It was a Powder Blues band. And we connected at a festival when I was playing with Jack. But oddly enough, I knew of Bill early on through his, his daughter when I owned a pool hall in Maple Ridge. And we play Powder Blues music. And this girl came in and said, turn this shit off. My dad plays it all the time. He knows these guys. And I was like, yeah, okay. Every, everybody says they know these guys or whatever. And then I come to find out years later at a festival that, you know, she wasn't as full of shit as I thought she was. So she was one of the, she was one of the non, non fibbers, as you would say. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I Bill's going to get into telling us how he got to uh, know Jack Lavin and many other people because he goes way back to, slinging records with a and b sound so tell us about it bill how'd you get it how'd you get into a and b sound uh they were running an ad in the paper and i walked in talked to the manager of the record department he hired me right away so that was kind of an easy interview <laughs> did you so you just walked in and did the interview and they yeah. were like you got the job yeah so there was there wasn't a lot of competition back then it's a much different yeah. landscape these days yeah, no signing bonus, no nothing like that. No shares. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk into this interview and said, yeah, I want a, the job. They didn't say, hey, like, do you have any experience? No. No. <laughs> okay. So you got the job, and then what happened? Well, I started working. On, I, yeah, I worked on the record floor, like on the retail record floor. And uh, like you call it, slinging records, you know, putting stuff away and marking them up and marking them down and getting them out the door. And I eventually worked my way into the warehouse, which was downstairs. And uh, that's kind of where I kind of kind of flourished, I guess, in my career. I went through that process. And uh, at one point in time, I was running the, uh, the record warehouse and had about 20 people or so, basically, that, uh, that worked in the warehouse. And it was a great time. Music was playing all the time, and we were always going out for coffees or beers. And it was a great time. So what what year was this? Or would this have been? Uh, let's see. I would have been maybe 74, 75, something like that. You were 74 or 75? <laughs> <laughs> That's not until next year. Yeah, 1974, 75, something around there. I was just a couple of years out of high school. Okay, and then uh, so our connection through Powder Blues was, you know, they came out late '70s. So by then, you, what what was the first concert you went to through A and B Sound? Uh, God, I didn't know it was going to be a test. <laughs> <laughs> the first concert I guess that I went to, courtesy of A and B Sound, was out in Abbotsford, and I took one of my warehouse guys with me, and it was for Stomp and Tom Connors. And we had passes backstage and stuff like that after the concert. And I knew a little bit about Stomp and Tom, you know, a Canadian legend and Canadian poet laureate. And by the time we got backstage after the concert, he'd already downed about 12 beer. So he was pretty tough. <laughs> That's nice. No, I know. And, and being connected with you on Facebook, I've seen so many pictures of you with all these guys. And of course, knowing, you know, our connection, meeting up and, and through the guys with the Powder Blues and whatnot. But your pictures with, you know, coming from a blues background with Stevie Ray Vaughan. Tell me, tell me about that story. How did that picture that you yeah, saw that was with a, Stevie come? That was a great one. The uh, he was represented by CBS Records at that time, and uh, the CBS rep Frank Jigliotti, who we called Uncle Frank or Jiggy, uh, came down and gave me some 
tickets for CB Ray and a couple of backstage passes. And again, I took a couple of my guys with me. And I think that was a Coliseum, if I'm not mistaken. And we're walking backstage before the concert. And up ahead of me in the hallway, which was kind of dark, uh, I see this guy walking with a hat on. And you could tell it was Stevie Ray's hat. And I went, I know that hat. And he turns around. We started talking. And all went backstage and had uh, a number of uh, brown sliders or wobbly pops before the show. Got a couple of pictures taken. And that was a, that was a great one. That was a good way to meet somebody. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. That's yeah. That's very cool. It was a great concert. And then, so when you say, you know, we say slinging records, like that was like legitimately records at that time, right? Because I, I was I was born in that, like I wasn't born then. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're gonna age myself here. You know, so when I grew up, it was kind of like cassette tapes were the medium that everything was. Yeah, when, was I, when I started AB Sound, we still had eight tracks, if you remember those, and cassettes, and it was later on that CDs came into it. And, so yeah, it, was it was like was cassettes, record. cassettes and records were still going, or no, eight, eight tracks and records, sorry, yeah. at that time. They didn't last too long after I got there, thankfully. And then what was it? Like, the, well, the eight tracks were going. Yeah, I don't really remember them. I remember, I think my dad had one in his car or something. Worked with video game things at the time. But yeah, it was cassettes and then, of course, CDs. So how did you get get out of that industry? Because I know we've done business stuff outside of, like, the music industry and whatnot. So at what point? Because... I think I recall record stores were starting to go tits up like late 90s, early 2000s. Like when Napster hit the market, it really killed everything. Yeah, I remember them. Yeah, so what? when did you get out of the actual music business, so to speak, in terms of, you know, working with... A couple of times. Yeah, I got out of it a couple of times. And again, it was always political. Uh, I was never about the, the music business or anything like that. It had to do with the management there. And I left once and uh, got called back. And <laughs> I don't know how much you want to say on a podcast. You know, are we covered legally here? <laughs> you, can, <clears throat> you can say whatever you want, whether or not that comes back on you. That's right. Uh, that's, that's another story. But, uh, you know, the... the the views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of, you know, JBR. Exactly. <laughs> so, and I've got, I've got my bleep unless, button. You got your, you got your bleep button here. You know, we've been, I don't know if anybody just heard that. Did you hear that, Bill? Hear what? This. Hold on. Right here. No, you can't hear it. Otherwise, you would hear it. So it's this bleep. So to let everyone know, like this is the first episode here, and at Bill being a good friend, we're kind of working out the cobwebs and stuff before I, um, you know, bring some other people on the show. Talk about Bill's background. He's a big supporter of music too, so he comes around all the the gigs of all the local guys and community and helps you know spread the word and keep it going because we all know how the music scene's kind of not doing uh, as well as it did years ago. So a lot of, yeah, yeah, well, we'll hope, you know, history repeats itself. So at some point when we're long dead and gone, you know, maybe the music business will flourish again. But what I was trying to say was, you know, still getting a lot of things set up to um, deal with like the back end infrastructure of making these podcasts kind of happen. So I have this little like soundboard where, you know, I can hit bleeps and drum rolls and things like that. But Clearly, I was, uh, we're doing a, a test of it here on this this call here with Bill, and he can't hear shit, but I can hear it. So I'll be curious <laughs> to hear if it shows up in post. I don't know. A lot of times I go over to Bill's and have a cigar. We sit at his pool and drink a beer, and he's always like, speak up, speak up. <laughs> I can hear you fine today. You can hear me fine today. That's because I'm talking through a microphone that's cranked that's right. up. <laughs> And speakers. <laughs> okay, so what else you got to you got to say so that people don't think, man, this podcast series is going to be dumb as shit. This is how exciting it is. We're going. Yeah, I know to- you're. I, I know you're holding back because we have a lot of conversations on this stuff, and you go. But the fact that you know there's going to be a world of people seeing this. <laughs> you see, you're quite you're quite reserved on these. So you know, I, 
when I, I did my post this morning on Facebook and uh, Dave Chisholm, you know, Dave Chisholm, right? Rock I shop. Do. Yeah, yep. sound guy. So he, um, you know, a lot of people watching this probably know him uh, that are from this local region. So he uh, says he's got some stories. We all know Dave's got stories. And yeah, he's going to be an interesting guy to get on here uh, with his stuff because he's a, he's not, I don't think he'll be reserved. I don't anticipate that <laughs> at all. Which is, well, which I is know great. I'll be interested to see all the yes from me forward. <laughs> Yeah, he's a he's a, I don't give a shit guy. I love it. That's why we get along. That's what he said to me once. Actually, he goes, you know, we get along because uh, we're both assholes. <laughs> <laughs> so what else? What are you doing now? What are you doing now in your in, in your music life? Uh, it's a test again. Not much actually. You know, I mean, again, like I say, since COVID, I haven't really been out going to a lot of places or doing a lot of filming. I, I know that on all the sort of local musicians, when I became your unofficial videographer, I've probably got a couple of hundred shows that you guys have done between you and Jack and all the rest of the guys locally and have done them and edited them. And I have a lot of them on my, uh, on my YouTube site. And again, a fair number of looks and people commenting saying that they liked them and stuff. No, you know, you should put out more, but really had yeah, much. You- yeah, you probably got videos of nearly, well, every blues guy that plays the Lower Mainland Vancouver area. I would think so. You know, on that circuit, I, I would. There's probably very few that you could list that you probably don't have some sort of footage of. And speaking of Jack, you mentioned Jack. I, I we didn't get into how you actually met him and how that came about. Why don't you fill me in on that one? Yeah. I'll give you a quick insight on that. When I went to high school, way back when, uh, my best buddy, Tim, had a sister named Cindy. And Cindy eventually became Jack Lavin's girlfriend and wife. And uh, there was some stuff going on there. And they had to kind of leave for a while. So I was looking after some of Jack's stuff. And they kind of moved in with us for a short while. So that's really kind of where my tie-in with Jack was. And then again with Powder Blue, I mean, I, I knew him a little bit from Teen Angel as well, but when he was with Powder, uh, they were playing at the Savoy, I think, if that's the club that I'm remembering where it was upstairs. And yeah. at halftime break, Tom was selling their Powder Blues Uncut album off the stage for 10 bucks or whatever it was. And um, at AMB Sound at that time, I was a manager of what they call the AMB One Stop, which is a wholesale operation for AMB Sound. And I serviced probably about 200 stores in BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, a little bit to Manitoba. And I was really impressed with their sound, loved the album. And I told uh, Jack and Tom, hey, why don't you give me a couple of hundred and I'll take them back and I'll sell them to my accounts and kind of see what we can get going from there. So we did and they took off pretty quickly. And then my boss at that time was a gentleman, still a mentor of mine, a hero named Ubi Schnack. And uh, Ubi used to work for RCA Records, but now he was the manager at A&B Sound in the, of the whole kind of music department. And he called up a guy named John Ford, who was then, I think, the president of RCA. And he told John, you better get out here and sign these guys, because if you don't, somebody else is going to sign them. And they got signed to RCA Records, and we kind of helped launch things. So we got credit for that a lot of times, and we got a gold, uh, sorry, platinum album dedicated to us uh, from Powder Blues, you know, for launching their careers, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it was a real thrill. Yeah, that's it's cr- crazy for me to hear because, you know, Tom and I go way back pretty close and he produced my album a decade ago now, Holy Smokes, uh, that we got the Juno nomination on. And I did a lot of opening and touring for him at the time and there was one show, I, I think it was the casino in Richmond, uh, where he came out, Ford came out and uh, got to meet him I think just before he... He passed away, but I didn't. I didn't know him. But Tom had talked a lot of stories, so it's kind of cool to you know, connect the different perspectives. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. That's um, yeah, that's great. So, given the fact that you don't want to get into too much stuff, I guess you tell me more when we're when nobody's watching. 
<laughs> this, is, this is good food for thought, right? You know, I'm going to have to pull this out of some people because, you know, we don't know. There might be 10 people that watch these videos or there might be a lot more. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, I appreciate your time, Bill, and um, jumping on and telling us a little bit about this and working out some kinks and pushing this podcast forward so that, um, you know, we can get these stories out to people. And maybe we'll have you on again if we can... Uh, We'll chat offline and see if there's something specific that uh, we could put out that people might be interested that won't uh, land you in any uh, legal troubles. <laughs> well, by the time you edit this down, you should probably have about a good 10 minutes worth anyway. Yeah, I don't even know how long we've been talking now. Not even. I didn't look. Attention to that. Yeah, no, it's all good. But yeah, I, uh, I appreciate your time. And, you know, I'm probably uh, going to see you later on today at some point. And when are you playing out at uh, the Duny? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. Tomorrow. But anybody watching this is going to be like, that was how long ago? <laughs> <laughs> they should have a date across the bottom. Recorded. Yeah. Well, Let's maybe see. maybe, maybe we'll do that in post. I don't know. See how much time we got. But anyways, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let you go. And uh, for those watching, stay tuned because I got some... Uh, Got some musicians uh, from the Lower Mainland area and uh, from the United States that are on deck to tell us what they've done and what they've been up to, and you know maybe what are you what are you doing there? You try? Oh God, put that away. Go put your drink. That's, on next, that's the next one going to my CD player that I. I know, and, and, and that's the, that, and that's the thing about Bill. That's what he's doing these days, and he's being a little modest. Is he promotes all the musicians, and here we are doing a podcast, and I'm, this is not about me. And whose other album you got there? Let's see. That's Jack and Gary Collier. Okay, Jack and Gary Collier. Did you take a listen? Al Walker is going to come on the show, and he gave me a copy of his album, which I lent to you there. Have you taken a listen to that yet? Yeah. Yeah? You like it? I do. Cannery What's Row. What's that one? Cannery, Cannery. Row, yeah. Cannery Road, yeah. Yeah, I got about 40, 40 CDs here on my on my computer table, so I got some listening to do. Yeah, and that's and that's what you're kind of doing these days is enjoying the retirement life from the from the day to day schlug it out, <laughs> just supporting the music and coming out to live shows, enjoying that, and promoting all the musicians and helping them in the best ways that you can. Yeah, I got to post more on YouTube too. I haven't done that for a while, so I'll dig up some classic oldies and perfect. Yeah, so concerts. we will get your we will get your YouTube channel and we'll post it up here in the video so we can uh, see if we can get you some subscribers and people can watch the videos that you have posted and that you'll continue to post because I know you've got I've helped you on the tech side of stuff and you've got like dozens of terabytes of I do stuff. yeah so much that it's like you got to throw some out because hard drives are way too expensive to like store that much stuff thankfully i've got the cloud yeah there you go well, that's uh, not not as cheap anymore these days anyway bill i'm gonna let you go and uh we appreciate you peace we'll see you, we'll see you farther on down the road <laughs> appreciate it cheers bye